I actually want to be in the workshops, but this is good too. In the late 40s, a computer was like a big room. And if I would have told you then that, you know, every hotel room door would have a computer so you could go in and out, you wouldn't have taken me seriously. In the early 90s, the first desktop computer started appearing, you know, on, on your desk at, at work, at home. And if I would have told you then that they would all be connected one day, today, you know, have instant access to anything. And even you could see through that, you know, what your friends are doing all the time. You wouldn't have taken me seriously. Well, today I'm here to talk to you about a new revolution, a new digital frontier enabled by the mobile phone. It's called augmented reality. It's where the digital world immerses, collides, connects to the real world. I will talk to you about what it is. I have some examples of layer, what we've seen on our platform emerge. And I will show you where it will lead. And I think it will liberate space. It started out augmented reality in 92. Uh, at Boeing. And Boeing, you know, you have to make these big planes, you have to do all this wiring. And that's really difficult. And specifically, if you have to look at the diagram and then look at the plane, and these wires are like, you know, it's a plane is like 300 feet, meters, I don't know, very long. So they came up with this system, you know, what if we can transpose, you know, where that green wire goes and where the blue one goes, and to efficiently do all that wiring. That's how it got started, just like the web, basically, in an R&D environment, in universities. And augmented reality is actually a daily thing if you're a jet pilot. Anyone? But also, you know, the off-sites line and uh, soccer games on TV, people will probably see that a lot. And since, you know, we have good mobile phones, since Android came out, 2008, you got a compass in the phone. So the compass will show you where a phone is pointing at. You will have a GPS which will know where you are at the moment. So if you're in Paris and the Eiffel Tower is there, it won't show it here. But when you point it there, the camera image and the Eiffel Tower will say, yeah, it's over there. And this is what we started with Layer in 2009. We made a little video and uh, yeah, everybody liked it. And I just explained this, so I'll skip that one. And if you see what people have built upon our platform, we have a publishing platform where people can make augmented reality. We call them layers, just like the web has websites. In augmented reality, you have a layer that you can make, you can choose to, yeah, on augmented reality, to make your experience. You have a browser as a user, which you can download on Android or iPhone, and with that you can experience it. And what we've seen that people have made, because anybody can make them for free, is a Twitter layer, tweets around. If you tweet some, something, not only is your message being posted, but also you have your image, your time, and your location. And Twitter has an open API, so the developers made a layer with that, an augmented reality experience. So if I now would open up the tweets around layer here, I can actually see what you just said in Twitter. I can get a sense like, hey, am I doing okay? <laughs> can I have the next slide? There you go. One of the things that we did not expect to come up, but what we really liked is historical layers. Layers that take you back in time. This is the uh, Berlin Wall. Currently, the Berlin Wall is not there anymore. And if you want to know about it, you can read a book and get an idea of what it was. You can watch a video. Look, you know, get a, an idea of how it was and how it looked like. But if you go there, you take out your phone and open up the Berlin Wall layer, you can see how tall it was. You can see how menacing the towers were. And you get an instant feeling, an instant insight to what it was like way back then. I think that's where augmented reality really sparks. And I'm sorry, Walter, it's happening today. It's not the future. 
Can I have the next slide, please? We also have kids' projects. In Deventer, um, it's a city in, Am or in, in Holland. Uh, the, the library worked together with an augmented reality developer, and they, they put out all these questions about the city, and kids run around answering these questions, and they compete. Several teams compete against each other to see who's best at getting to know the city. They even won a prize with this. Next slide, please. And I think, I mean, I like the history stuff, but I think sometimes I like the artistic stuff even better that people are making with augmented reality. Um, Sander, or SNDRV, it's an artist, he's been working a lot with digital art, and he started using our platform. And last October, he did the uninvited art exhibition at the Modern Art Museum in New York. On the web, people were invited to upload their art, digital art, images, sound, 3D objects. And they could ch choose, you know, what floor do I want to be on? And then in October, he actually opened up with press and everything at the MoMA, without MoMA even knowing it. He opened up his exhibition, and he had so much art, he added a seventh floor. <laughs> I mean, he showed us that augmented reality will liberate space. Next slide, please. And I liked the previous presentation because... What we see now with our platform, it's two years old. People are now making tools to make it easier. We're seeing content management systems uh, on top of our, on our platform. We haven't built those. They are just appearing, emerging. So now it's easier to hack space. Next slide, please. So, you know, we are used to any space around us because we don't control it. You don't control the square you're at, all the media that comes at you, all the buildings you see, you know, actually, you disappear in your iPod, in your book. You ignore it because you have no choice. Today, actually, you're starting to get a choice through augmented reality. This is one of the most ugly buildings in Holland. I googled it and this came up. So imagine in the near future, this is going to happen this year, I believe, that you cycle by, that's what you do in Holland, and you zoom in. Next slide. And you see a digital object on top of it. <laughs> what do you want? Demolish it or keep it? It's key. What will the city do? What will the architect think? He's going to get feedback. They never get feedback. <laughs> How do you like your chicken? You know, this is a good piece of chicken, grilled everything, just, you know, put it in the microwave, you have a good meal, or, you know, your salad will be better. But wait, you know, Associated Press recently had an article that says that there's antibiotics on that, in that chicken. So if you pull out your phone in the supermarket at the end of the year, you're going to see products you might not want to buy, although you're buying them today. All the information of the web is now going to be projected on reality. That's going to happen. It is happening. I don't do sports. I have a startup, I have a baby, I love what I do. So, you know, I'm not the most physical guy right now. So if I see a poster like that, you know, like, how does that make me feel? Because I'm not like that. Well, you know what? It makes me feel ugly. And this poster is everywhere in the world, so everybody can react on it and say, you know what? I, I feel that too. I agree. This is how AR is liberating space. Let me end with the last uh, story here. I'm a cancer survivor. Recently, I did an interview with a researcher who was working on making uh, uh, hospital rooms for kids with cancer better. The challenge with hospitals is that, you know, it's infrastructure. You don't change it that easily. They're not about change. They're about saving lives. Very logical. So how do you qu quickly, you know, make this space better for kids? Well, we talked a lot about things, you know, healing spaces, and you think about parks or little green places. But what if AR can actually help you with this? You know, if the kids can leave messages on the wall. You know, I was here before and asked for two peanut butter at breakfast. You can. Or you know what? When it's warm, just close the curtains because the air conditioning doesn't work in this room well. Or what if, you know, when you're there for your chemo treatment, 
this little rabbit, you know, is going to be your friend, and he's going to guide you in a light way. Every morning he'll say, hey, good morning, how are you? Probably had a rough night again. I have, that's how it is today. And the doctor will come, you know, after lunch. But let's, in the meantime, play a game. This is, you know, we can do this today. The web liberated information. You know, now we have access to everything. Music has been liberated. We either buy it or download it, either, either which way. Video has been liberated. And I think augmented reality will liberate space. We can change anything any way we want to now. Thank you.